good morning, Tasty Nation. Mark Klein Trader here. Well, it looks like somebody had a good weekend, huh? Overnight, look at what happened. Let's take a look. Here's the SPY. Here's how we left off on Friday. Uh, let me zoom in real quick. Here's how we left off on Friday. And uh, let's. Here's Thursday. That Remember that spike up? And then here's overnight Thursday, Friday morning. And then Friday morning, we went down, right? And then over the weekend, kablooey. This is Sunday, right? Um, after our trading, it just spiked up, right? And here we opened. And as you can see on the open a little bit, it's, well, of course, it's still up from Friday. So if you don't have an intraday chart, this is what's called a gap up. Because if I, if you didn't see this, oh, whoops, my bad. If you didn't have this, all you would see was, all would see was a close here and an opening up here. So there'd be a gap. And that's what's called a gap up opening. Um, the good news for your bearers, a lot of times a gap up is followed by, usually they can't hold it, they either fill the gap and then go lower. So who knows, right? But if, if don't forget, if um, you are a, uh, don't forget to take your profits. If uh, Look what happens to Ivy Rank, because here's what happens. All right, and I'll zoom in. All right, and now watch. I'm going to zoom into right here. If you are one of my uh, uh, private coaching members, I sent out a blast this morning reminding you how to take your profits and what to do. Okay, so take a look. Look at this, IV Rank right here. Wait, you know what? I'm going to change to a different study. So for new people, you can see um, how important it is to get your trades on. All right, so here's this 25 red line. That's when IB rank is 25. Okay, so this happened a few days ago, right? And it got as high as, and it reached 35. And that's kind of where everyone gets excited. Where I decided you can start putting on yeah, the chance of your trade being more profitable. It goes up greatly once you hit IB rank of 35, in my opinion. Look what happened. If you had put on a trade on April 13th when Ivy Rank was 35 and you did a regular standard golden gecko, you'd be sitting pretty right about now. Okay? Um, or even if you did only half. I, as you can see, Ivy Rank just collapsed from what is this? From 35 down to 9. Okay, so this is this is what happens on a big move like this, on a gap up like this. Now could, could it settle down? Yes, it could. If you're a technical analyst, you can look at all kinds of stuff. But um, I wanted to show this because I want to see how even what's great about the Golden Gecko type thing, even if you're wrong in direction, you can actually still make money because of this premium, this volatility collapse like this or this IV rank collapse. I'm going to zoom out just a bit and take a look. And I'm going to slide over a little bit. Okay, so we talked about... Um, People wonder why do you use charts? Are, are, do you use charts? To, no, I use charts to teach. You know, I use the arithmetic to trade. Here, well, here's what I mean by that. I mean, you can look at this chart right here and you can say, okay, do you think the market's going up or down? Pick your poison. It doesn't really matter. From here, you got to use your arithmetic and the math. And that's why I would simply go on, you can go on to Tastyworks and you can pick any symbol you want. And I just do a standard, let's just do a standard Golden Gecko. People again ask me, why do you call out a standard golden gecko? Isn't it just an iron condor? No. If I say put on a golden gecko, all my members and subscribers know what it is. You're putting on a specific, you're selling a put and a call closest to one standard deviation, closest to 45 days to expiration. And you're also buying a put and a call at two standard deviation, closest to 45 days to expiration. Which means you want the puts and calls you're selling to be as close to 84% as possible. Okay, if you can, I'll try to zoom in a little bit, if I can, not too much, sorry guys. Okay, and you want the wings to be as close to 2% as possible, because that's about, you know, two standard deviations away. So it got real close here, but of course the call side strikes are, I don't know, I should leave it. So as long as it's this close to 84 and 2%, here's what I mean by I trade the arithmetic. Look, I can collect $79 for this trade. My probability of, ma of making money is at 72%. But as you all know, we like to manage our trades a certain way. I have a 90% chance of making 50% of my max profit. And the wonderful thing about Tastyworks is this will cost me $4 to put on and nothing to come off. So Tastyworks, you can close your trades for free. 
That's what I love about it. Um, by the way, you can do this on anything you want. A lot of people ask me, can you put this, can you use earnings? You can do whatever you want. Um, I prefer to do things with, with IV rank a lot higher than this though. How can you tell what IV rank is on some underlinings? Close this, go to grid. Here's your grid. For you new people, go to grid and you can create your own watch list once you, you know, open your own Tastyworks account. You can pick high options volume. These are all default stuff. You can take, you can pick liqu liquidity is very important. And you want to click this button right here. You can start in descending IV rank. All right. And there's a filter here. So here you go. These are all the stocks with IV ranks in descending order. And you can use your filter right here. And you can say, hey, do I want to include earnings in this or show all or earnings only or none? So I just like to exclude earnings to make it simple. And I want their, I want to exclude earnings within this range. For the next 60 days, I want to make sure the st uh, I only want to see stocks that have no earnings in the next 60 days. <coughs> and I want IV rank of at least 35%. Okay, and I want liquidity at least three stars or better, so I'm going to uncheck this. And bam, here's what comes up. Now, as you can see, when you look at these stocks and pick on them, a lot of them are either too cheap to trade or um, they're not liquid enough, meaning there's that uh, you can pick one and try but I, it's not my job to tell you what to trade you can trade however you want but you can see right here this is a great way to kind of go through the list and then you can see what works for you and the neat thing about tastyworks is look it'll remember what i want to do okay so here's my golden gecko on this wow because look the strikes are just so this is too cheap of a price can't collect any money see that so you can just kind of go down the list and I'm looking for, I don't know, for some reason, Pepco doesn't load, it's grayed out, I don't know, maybe it's not trading yet. Here's GNC Holdings, uh, it's only an $8 underlying though, so watch when you do this, it's kind of hard to do because, whoa, I screwed that up, hold on. Yeah, I can't really do anything because the strikes are so you know yeah okay this is why here's what i mean about trading numbers i don't have to tell you what strike i just you just if i say golden gecko you know what strikes you're looking for 84 percent down here and two percent up here as you can see it doesn't fall in anything nicely because the strikes are all jacked up now you know why i prefer sticking to main indexes um watch if i if i change this and i hit trade and i go to iwm right here for example which is one of the cheaper ones go to strategies it's all set up Bam, zoom out real quick. Look, a lot easier to trade. I can still make money. Look, $90. And I have a 89% chance of making 50% of max profit. I like at least 90%, but that's close enough. And you can adjust that anyway, just based on this. And Ivy ranks 18. If Ivy rank was higher, it'd be even easier. All right, but somebody had a, I mean, what a weekend, right? So do I use charts? Yeah, to teach. Because look, in this example, you can see, right? Look, I'm looking for lower highs, okay, and lower lows. So it got jacked up over here because this high right here kind of beat these, right? So I'm looking for it to kind of gap up and fail so it goes lower. And see this low right here? This low is higher than what? This low and this low, which could signal... That the bottom is over it could trend upward again but you know what do i know i don't know anything I'm just like but i'm just letting you know what i what i look at because then maybe you might want to skew something so here's spy here's what i mean by skew you can kind of say oh, okay well based on that who knows mark's always wrong let's say so if mark thinks it's going to go down let's let's bet it'll go higher or if mark thinks it'll kind of trend yeah down let's bet it'll go higher so here's your golden gecko right i watch i'll clear it again Type in SPY. Look how easy. I love this Tastyworks platform. Look, it just boom. And skewing means you can kind of be biased or kind of bet more on the opposite side. So if you think the market's going to go higher, see right here with these strikes, which is strikes, you can click and just kind of kind of edge everything higher. Watch, move everything up. See that? And uh, you can move everything down. So let's say, see. And everything kind of goes up in time. Well, let's see. Oh, well, I think. Well, let's go back to the chart. And you go, okay. Well, what do you think? 
I don't know, everyone thinks the market's going to go higher, so let's bet it'll go lower. Let's hedge it to be lower. If you want to hedge it to be lower, great, then get this and maybe hit, edge it two strikes in. Because remember now, as long as the stock stays anywhere in this green area, you're going to make money. The shaded area is where, based on current math, current implied volatility, this shaded area is where the math says it should stay within this expected range right here. So you're still outside outside of it. You're just skewing it down either way because you figure it'll you want to give yourself more room to be, you know, to be right on the downside. Okay? And that's kind of what I use a chart chart for and basically to teach. So I'll load here we go. By the way, if you <coughs> if you like these charts, I'll give them to you for free. At the end of this video, please hit like, subscribe uh, to my channel, and just put down the comments, Mark, email me your charts. Um, and I'll be glad to do so. So, for all you technical guys out there, um, I don't know. I still feel like this could go down, but who knows? I mean, we are kind of low down here, and it is skewing up. So, if you look at this, it's still red, but it sure look there was a strong opening. So let's see if it gaps, if it if it closes this gap. What that means is, let's see if it closes this gap from here to here. And so far, I don't know. Let's go to the one minute chart. I don't know, it's kind of flat right now. So let's just see what happens. Um, stuff in the news today about Korea, who knows? All right. So um, private coaching clients, uh, check your Hangouts Blast. I sent one out this morning. If you're new and you'd like more information about that, at the end of this video, there will be a link up here for you to check out more. If not, happy trading, guys. And if something pops up, I will come back on. But right now, I'm hoping this... This trend line continues down. Let's just see what happens. All right. And uh, don't forget, trade with arithmetic. That's what I love to do. All right, Mark Cohen, Trader, signing off. Have an awesome day, guys.